Building your own cloud storage with SparkleShare. Shannon Morris reports on this segment of Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. We've got a fantastic show for you guys this week. We do. Yeah, what are you doing? I am getting into all sorts of nefarious fun, as I always do, and I hear you're making bits go to other bits. I am. And synchronizing so, them. Yes, I am. But first, I wanted to share a gift from a fan. Oh, that's right. Because we got Every one. now and then, you know, people send stuff over to our 15501 or 548 addresses that have been yes. published here and there and everywhere. But, uh, yeah, and... This is a pretty cool one. If you ever want to send a gift, you can just go over to um, hjkshop.com at the very bottom, or it's on there. And uh, what is this? Oh, it's a pocket protector. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is something very special. Paul, we're oh, going to have to get a B-roll clip okay. of this because there's no way there's you can really appreciate this without seeing all, what is it, 2.2 million? It, it's not a sticker? No, oh, no. here we go. Okay, so this, this is, is from an anonymous, anonymous fan. Uh, he said... I've included a DLP DC2K DMD, a digital micro mirror device. It's the same chip currently used in cinemas around the world. 2.2 million mirrors on this chip can be individually addressed and move at speeds of over hundreds of megahertz. At its heart, you can think of the DMD as a giant shift re register that requires information to be clocked in extremely fast. And he also forced the DMD image uh, to hold an image of the Hack 5 logo, so it should stay that way even, even if it's powered on again. If you have a microscope, you should be able to see millions of individual pixels that make up the image. Some will be tilted one way, the others the opposite way. This is the heart of the DLP DMD and how we steer light. Isn't this... That's really this cool. Just, I'm sorry, but this is amazing. Let me see it. Uh, Look at that. So it's a DL. So all of so the reason that you're seeing Hack Five is because some of the mirrors wow. are pointed this way, and some of the mirrors are pointed that way, and there's just millions of them, oh, like, and they can make them rotate really fast. So you can amazing. imagine, like in a projector, this is how you can project like 4K imagery oh, that's in a how cinema. They do it. Okay. And I am just absolutely in awe. And now looking at microscopes, because, wow. wow. I know, I want to buy a microscope just to look at all this. This, this is going in pixels. like a shadow box on the wall. This Ooh. is just, technology is Can we put beautiful. it over there next to the other, the Why PC would anyone hide in this inside box? of a projector? This needs to, this is that's just really gorgeous. That's really Yeah, that's wow. really cool. So thank you. Thank can you, Anonymous. Can I lick it? Don't, please don't lick okay, it. Fine. It's <laughs> with you and... So, <laughs> But I like techno lust. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Different techno lust. <laughs> so, moving so, right along, you are you're uh, into owning your own cloud. I am. As last yes. week you talked about own cloud. Yes. So, I I've, I've discovered this whole thing about owning your own server, owning your own cloud so there's no third party in charge of your data you mean, or holding your data. You mean some company, some say an American company yes. that likes to do business in America exactly. where American agencies, maybe they're intelligent Intelligence agencies right. also are interested in your bits. Exactly. So maybe they should say your bits. So last week we discussed own cloud, and I'm sure you guys hopefully really enjoyed that segment. But now we're going to check out Sparkle Share. So this one keeps all your different folders and all your different projects in sync across multiple computers and users as well. And it integrates with uh, things like Bitbucket, uh, GitHub. Gitorious, which I've never used myself, or you can run it on your own server. So today, Darren installed a server, and I'm going to be checking out the client side of this to see how it runs and how nice the GUI is. Oh, uh, you're not getting away that easy. We're gonna actually going to spin up a new server because I want to show you. Oh, you are. I'm gonna okay. want to, I, I want to show you how simple this is. I'm gonna pull up another Sigwin terminal here. Um, I'm in it. Windows right now because I'm showing off the Windows client. Uh, Shannon's gonna do the Linux client, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to set this up. Um, and so I'm in Sigwin, which is basically like a, a tool that mm -hmm. allows you to do like uh, a lot of Linux stuff within Windows. So I've got LS. If you've ever seen me doing like ducky segments, you'll see me doing, you know, LS and being like, oh, or like <laughs> CL clear, oh. So I installed Sigwin, which is really cool. Anyway, that said, let me SSH over to our new box, which we just spun up. This is a Debian server, and it has, I've never actually SSH'd to it, so we're doing the bad thing and SSHing is root, and I haven't even added it to my host <laughs> file. But, oh, wow. so, so this is like that fresh. This is the first login. If I type history, 
there is no history. The first <laughs> history is history one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! So um, let's go ahead. Uh, it's the instructions to set this up on your own self-hosted server are ridiculously easy. The first one is to actually I don't even need to do that. I'm already running as root. But Sparkle Share makes this so simple with an awesome Dazzle script. So I'm just going to copy that into here. Paste that. And that was it. OK, so it's got that. And now I just do Dazzle Setup. And it's like, hey, you don't have Git, so let's install Git. And of course, this is a Debian, so it's using yum to install Git. Uh, there's also, you know, very similar installation on Ubuntu if you wanted to. Yes. Sudo apt get install git. You know, apt, yum, pacman, they're, they're all awesome for this okay. reason. Uh, so our, already we're almost done. We're importing our GPG keys, setting up our storage, and there we go. And so now it's saying, great, our, our setup is complete. All we need to do is dazzle, create, and then the name of the project. Okay. So um, if you do dazzle, Create, and you could say my folders or whatever my have folders. you and it would go ahead and set that up and from here we can get our sinky sinky on it saying okay, cool. now we just link a computer with dazzle link and then it'll ask us for uh, our computer's ID okay. now I've already set this up on my Windows machine so I'll show you here I've got this little guy sparkle share and there's not a whole lot you can do right here. Right. You can just see what's changed. You can turn on notifications, do the about. And I've already set one up on a different server called Hack5. So if I pull that folder up, you'll see where it lives is, you know, your user folder, your username, and then Sparkle Share, and then the name of your folder. Okay. If I go back a directory, you'll notice really the only thing in here is a little text file that has your code. Ah. And hey, check that out. It's just a DSA or RSA key. Okay. It's just using SSH. Oh, surprise. Um, and so let's go ahead and set yours up now Great. with that and get you all linked up. OK, so I am on your laptop for this. So I'm going to leave the full name as Ardwolf. And we'll use uh, Darren at Hack5 as the email. Sure. Is that OK with you? That's fine. OK, so hit continue. And this is after you've already installed it. And I'm going to go ahead and skip the tutorial. Oh, no, let's see. Isn't it? See it? It's, okay. like, it's just like Dropbox. Yeah, so it creates a special folder. Files you want to add to your project, sync them with the host automatically. So yeah, just like Dropbox. Continue. Uh, and it's also going to add one to your status icon, which is very nice. Uh, it shows a syncing process status, and contains links to your projects, and an event log. Great. And you can also add projects to SparkleShare by using the Add to SparkleShare button whenever you see it on the web. And the project will be add automatically added. So that's a pretty nice little perk. So I'm going to finish that. All right, so you're all installed. How okay. do we now get you linked up? So I am going to go to your, where's your uh, It's your down at the bottom. Icon. I'm using GNOME 3, so it's all down at the bottom. Do I got to click go down here? Just go to the bottom right. And it bottom, kind of oh, there up. it goes. Yeah. Okay. No, there it is. Okay, so Sparkle Share. I'm going to click on that, right click, and then go up to Sparkle Share. Aha! Ardwolf's so key. So it's just in slash <gasps> home slash Sparkle Share. Wonderful. <laughs> Should we mention the little problem we that we should. ran into there with is, this? There are, uh, there's a new version, uh, 1.1 for uh, Linux and OS X. Which just is, Linux and OS X. Which seemed pretty awesome. And then there's 1.0 for Windows. And uh, yeah. in all the previous versions, 1.0 and everything previous has this little bug where they only show you your, uh, your, your link code um, during installation. And that's the only way to find it. Yeah, so if you accidentally just kind of pass that while you're installing and you're like me and you just Oops. hit next, 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 you might miss that code. And then you got no way to find it well, again. You would think but, uninstalling and reinstalling it would allow you to get back to that. Right. But it doesn't uninstall all the registry <laughs> crap that's installed well, with it. Well, it turns out, okay, and you know what, to their credit, because I realize this now, that they, they actually made it quite simple. Your linked code, that RSA key, is literally just in your Sparkle Share directory. Yeah, so, so that's the Darren's ID go. key that's that you it. had in your directory. It's just this right here 
and which of course we made this harder for ourselves and ended up looking for it for like two hours you know actually this is a good example of like and i, I know some <laughs> people at home will totally sympathize here we were like oh this is unix i know this it should be you know yeah. difficult and stuff and yeah. you start making it more you make it more typical. difficult than it actually is and, and really if you just kind of like read the you know. I did find a blog online it was not SparkleShare's blog but it said that you can find the registry key in a text file but it didn't say where that text file was so now we found it so now we found okay. it so let's go ahead Thank and God. link you up go ahead and open that okay. in uh, gedit or whatever and just copy all of that copy. all right and then head over to your SSH and I'll go back terminal. to let's see just alt tab or move your mouse to the top left. It's GNOME 3. Where it's is weird. it? There it is. Yes. Okay. And as it mentions right here, to link up computers, we just simply use Dazzle Link command. So go ahead and use that, okay. Shannon. So it's Dazzle Link. And then just it? hit enter. Yep. Okay. Paste and your client paste. ID. Okay. So this is the whole piece that yep. I just copied. Oops. Oh, crap. Control Shift V. I always forget to do that. Okay. Yep, that's it. Enter. Access projects. Okay, repeat there we this go. stuff to get access to more clients. Okay, so that's right. easy. And so since we already have a project called Hack5 on this server, now if you just go ahead and uh, add a project to this, so it, again in the bottom right. Okay. And then you right click Look. on Ooh, it's Sparkle Share. And then go to Add Hosted Project. This is where you can see it integrates with all of these ah, different hosted there we services. Go. Cool. And so you choose your own server, so we have and our as own you can server. see on my computer where we set this up, it says Dazzle, create folders, and it'll tell you, like, for your address, you enter in this, for your remote path, you enter in that. Uh, for you, Shannon, since we're actually using a different server, it's ssh colon slash slash storage at uh, 64.20.62.220. Mm -hmm. And for the path, it is slash home slash storage slash hack five okay there we go and add this may take a while let's go get some coffee project okay so project hack five has been successfully added access the files from your sparkle share folder okay and there we go and if so you can go ahead and hit open folder get out of my way so now if for example on my hack five folder i don't know i create um a new I don't know, I'll go with a rich text file and be like, OMG, this works. Then over on Shannon's in just a moment. There it is. So hey, it hey. takes like 10 seconds or so. It's not too bad. It works. It does. <laughs> it's not without its limitations, actually. I was, True. I was actually about to do, you know, one of my favorite shortcuts in Windows, which is Alt-F-W-F for create a new folder. Ah, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. Alt-File. W ha, ha, ha. for new, F for folder. Ah, uh, you and your keyboard I, I love those. And so I would be like, this is empty. And you can sit there and refresh all day long, but it's actually not going to synchronize it because there are some limitations with this software. It does not sync empty folders. Oh. And you can't have a Git project within your uh, home folder here because, okay. or any of your project folders because it's actually using Git on the back end. Okay. And that would be really recursive, and the Git would get the Git. And you, got, you just got to get out of here for that. What a pain in the behind. Yeah. But still, okay, pretty cool. I think it's got some promise. I think some it of has the software some is a little immature, but yes. it, I think their, um, their site makes it very easy to get it set up and running. It does. And if you, um, and the, while they have like Android client, it's not full featured. You can only see files. You can't really uh, sync files with it yet. Okay. Um, I think this, project is one to follow because they've done a good job of saying like these are you know limitations this is what we're good at mm -hmm. and if they just continue evolving the client software because I see I mean the server stuff was the easiest I've ever set up yeah for any that was project. really simple in fact you can set up your own encrypted just with dazzle create encrypted and then whatever your project name is and uh, but you can only do that to, to new projects not a currently existing one, correct? Right, once you have a project, you can't make it encrypted later. And they have a pretty good uh, explanation on their GitHub here of the encrypted you know, client-side setup. Basically, it uses OpenSSL and AES-256. Um, pretty straightforward, really cool. They even mention here that um, there are some limitations, of course. Like, for example, if you have 
two people working on the same file yeah. and you want to save it, you're going to have a conflict because it doesn't, you know, the server can't actually see, understand those files. Right. It understands those file names. So bear in mind, that's not going to be secure. So, you know, don't name your stuff like worlddomination.txt. But other than that, you know. <laughs> Uh, of other than that, it says, you know, if you also don't forget your password or your files will be lost forever unless scientists invent a working quantum computer. <laughs> so bear that in mind. Well, I'm glad they have a sense of humor. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> and I think that's important in open source. I do too. Yes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more versions of this in the future. I'll there definitely are also check it out too. A couple more, like in, in the spirit of owning your own cloud, own cloud really got the great name for that. But, uh, you know, hosted projects, self-hosted, you know, bring it back. Yeah. Uh, there's a really cool movement going on right now. And I want to see you cover some more of this stuff. Yeah, uh, me I'm too. looking forward to your feedback on what other projects you run as alternatives to those mainstreams that are the Dropboxes and the Twitters and all of those things. So hit us up, feedback at hack5.org. With that, we're going to take a quick break before we find out about this week's trivia. Budding entrepreneurs, startups, and innovators are all turning their ideas into realities backed by the strength of a .NET domain. That's right, .NET, they're globally known as one of the most popular domain extensions in the world, and a .NET domain injects your business with instant credibility. Entrepreneurs and startups are immediately discovering the advantages of building their websites with .NETs. And get this, if you already have a .com, then why don't you purchase the .NET and protect your online brand? Or is the .com you want already taken? Well, the .NET is an awesome alternative. You don't have to register something 500 characters long. I don't even think you can. You can find yourself a new .NET domain, the same place Shannon and I get them, over at domain.com. We love these guys because they're affordable, they're easy to use, they're reliable. I mean, their .NETs are only $8.99 a year. Plus, doing business with them is really fun. They're totally active on social media. You can hit them up at domain.com and see that the customer support is awesome. So you guys know domain.com is huge fans of Hack5. They're one of our longest running sponsors. They wanna hook you up with 15% off their already affordable domain names and hosting. All you have to do, use the coupon code HACK5 at domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and big time savings, so don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. It's time for the trivia. Now last week's question was, the Merkle tree was named after what security researcher and developer? And the answer was, Ralph C. Merkel. That's a pretty easy one. Now this week's question is, what foundry created the Ubuntu typeface font found in Ubuntu operating systems? You can answer that over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. <laughs> 